Hello students. We are going to complete our week with the unit that we started. We have here unit five. Now the title of the unit is Do You Really Need It? And within the units, you can see that we talked about different topics concerning advertisement, about shopping. We took something about advising against something and we had the pronunciation too. Now, once again, you can see that we have your adverb clauses also, and the real talk are also parts of what we talked about. And as we said, that we have here different types of phrases and different types of pronunciation. Now we're going to start with what we had yesterday in the last lesson. We have here the listening part. Now in the listening lesson, we had something about advertisements. Now we started with a question, how can an advertisement be successful? So this was about mainly talking about advertising techniques in a lecture. Now within the advertising techniques that we have here, we said that we have bandwagon technique, the anti-bandwagon technique, the endorsement and emotional appeal, which we matched with the different types of adver advertisements. So we listened to a lecture about advertising techniques, then identified the kind of technique each product uses you can see that we have here the different products. We have the Sparkle Bright toothpaste, which takes the endorsement or uses the endorsement technique. We have here the Dewtop Cola using the bandwagon technique. The Indigo Jeans, which uses the anti-bandwagon technique and both the Caremark cards and safe home alarm systems use the emotional appeal. Now, after the listening part, we had something dealing with pronunciation. So as usual, we notice how Native speakers speak English and how they link their words together and how their sentences flow. So we concentrated on two. We said that there are different ways to pronounce two. Now you can just see here from the graph that we studied yesterday that we can pronounce it as in boo, which is the original pronunciation. Uh, so we have a true T with the schwa sound, we have also, it comes out like a D sound, also with a schwa sound, and we have here the flap T pronunciation. And we learned how to link within speaking our T sounds, or the two in general, with the other words. Now, we do have an exercise in the book. Now, just to start as an example that we took yesterday, and then we will apply. We have here the first one. We went to the lecture. You can see that there's just one T sound. Come to the event. There's a flap sound here. Come to the event. Let's go to the store. Let's go to the store. There is the D sound here. I wanted to do my homework earlier. I wanted to do my homework. You can see that wanted was changed or within the pronunciation and sometimes even the T that we have here wanted disappears. So I wanted to do our or my homework earlier. Now dropping this true T makes speech smoother. So don't forget to reduce and link the word to. Now we are going to apply the exercises that we have here on page number 73. You are going to listen. So I have someone who had applied these sentences and you are going to listen how she applied the sentences in the book. So you have your sentences, you have the exercise, the complete exercise in the book ready on page number 73. Listen to how the speaker pronounces the two. Good morning and welcome to Advertising 101. You are here today because you want to learn the secrets behind how advertisers sell to consumers. Because viewers admire and want to be like the person, they may want to use the product. The advertiser tries to get the viewer to respond to the commercial with some kind of strong emotion. The advertiser wants the consumer to associate the product with the emotion. So you can see how the two was pronounced in all the sentences that we have, and now you can link together, and we have all the previous pronunciation lessons that we studied. You can all join them together and use your pronunciation more often to make it more fluent. Now, we had something mentioned, mentioned about a consumer. So who is the consumer? Now here in this sentence, which is number five in your book, we have here, the advertiser wants the consumer to, to associate 
the product with the emotion. We want to just focus on the word consumer. So actually we have two people mentioned. We have here the advertiser and the consumer. So you can see basically why we were talking about advertisements that this man here, he is the advertiser. We do have him also here, the advertiser, which makes the other person here and here the consumer. And you can see from the picture here, and there are lots of cards and shopping carts that he is doing a certain action. So here, the word consumer is actually one of the words that we are going to study within our lesson today, which is the vocabulary building lesson. So moving on within our unit, we have reached the vocabulary building lesson here. Our objectives of the day are, number one, to give the meaning of new vocabulary from pictures and examples, to establish the meaning of new vocabulary in relation to their synonyms and antonyms, to connect the new words with their definitions, number four, to form sentences using the new vocabulary. So we're going to move on with our lesson here. Now, basically, we are going to do the same thing. We are going to read the meaning and try to relate what we know from our previous background. Uh, we are going to go through the meaning in the context. We are also going to ask if you need a classmate and you can discuss together as well. And of course, we're going to get hints from pictures, synonyms, antonyms, and explanation. So we're going to move on with our lesson. You have here on page number 73, you will see these words in the reading on pages 60 and 61, match the words with their meanings. So please open your books on page number 73, and we're going to start with our exercise. So you can see, first of all, that we have here the exercise. So just to read, what do we have here? We have the first word, consumer, exposed. Number three, we have logo, simple word. We have number four, outlandish, we have number five, spontaneously, and we have number six, unconventional. Now we do have the meanings here. We have the first one, shockingly strange or unexpected. We have B, design symbol of a business or a product. We have C, without planning. We have D, different from what is typically expected. E, a person who buys things or services, and we have F, left unprotected. So if you do know any of these words and the meanings, you can match. If you don't, we are going on with our lesson. Now this time we have something different. We are going to see what is the word. We are going to also see what is the classification of this word. And we are going to see also what uh, is this usually, uh, this word usually used for. The type, is it for a person? Is it for a thing? Sometimes it can be for all four. We have here the person, the thing, the place, and action. And we're going to give hints by giving synonyms or antonyms and also related words. So we're going to move on with our lesson here. Now you can see that we have something different just to change here and play a game together. So we're going to choose first of all. Now here starting with the game. Now we're going to stop. We're going to start with the first word which is outlandish. So we have the first word outlandish here. You can see from the picture, if you saw someone in the streets moving on and wearing these strange shoes and the different socks, now this person looks quite outlandish. Also, if I tell you that this is the entrance of my house, this is an outlandish entrance. So what is the meaning of outlandish? We have here the word outlandish. Here, I described the person or I described the entrance, which makes it an adjective. It can be used for a person, it can be used to describe a thing, to describe a place or an action as well. Now, to give you a close synonym here, I can say that it is very close to something that is strange or weird. And we can relate it also with idiosyncratic. Do you remember idiosyncratic from the lesson that we took, listen and discuss in unit four? When we describe the toys, Andy's toys, that they are idiosyncratic. So we have here the first one, which is outlandish. Now going back to our game here. Now let's choose another word. We can see that we have here 
spontaneously. So moving on to spontaneously, we can see that we have here now someone who is free. Now there is no thinking here. You can see that there is someone we can relate to playful. We have here feeling open, curious, wild. Now all of these words can be associated to the word spontaneous. Now just imagine that you are uh, flying, you are free, there are no kinds of um, commitments or there is nothing that you have to go back to and make sure of. So we have the word spontaneous as an adjective. Spontaneously with the ly here is the adverb. So since we do have an adverb here, this means that it is for actions. We are describing actions here. Now we can say that the synonym of spontaneous is something freely done. And we can say that we have here something is done without planning. So we have the second word here, which is the word spontaneous. Now moving on with our lesson here, we can stop also and choose the word unconventional. So we have here the word unconventional here. You can see that these are lots of fish. They are going together. They are the same color, but one is totally different. It is a different color and also going the different way. Now we can see also that we have here these three light bulbs and we have here the one in the middle is different. So here, why didn't I say that's just different? Now we're going to see what is the meaning of unconventional. We have here the word unconventional is also an adjective to describe. We can describe a person, a thing, a place, or an action. And we can say that it is very close to, or actually it is the opposite of something that is usual. So here we are relating between something that is different but unusual at the same time. So this is what makes it the uh, unconventional meaning here. And we can relate it to our strange word, which is outlandish. So you can see that unconventional is very close to outlandish, but outlandish means that something is stranger. Now moving on, we have finished three words. Now we are going to see what else do we have here. We have the word exposed. Now we have the word exposed here. Let's just see here. Now we have here, you can see that there is a wire that is open, that is exposed. Now here, this can cause some kind of danger. Also, if you have any kind of device and the device is open, is it's exposed, here it can be also something that it will be damaged. So there is a threat that this uh, device will be damaged or a person might be hurt. But not, that's not always the case because sometimes you have something like this. We have some uh, advertisements. Now we can just tear the paper to see what is the advertisement that we have here under it, which doesn't have any kind of danger in it. But in general, we are going to say that we have here the word exposed. We are describing the wires here that they are exposed or the advertisement that it is exposed, which makes it an adjective. Now we have here, this adjective can be used for a person, a thing, a place, or an action. I can describe an action as an exposed action, or a place, an exposed place, or even a thing. Now also we have here something that is the opposite of exposed here. We can say that covered is the opposite of exposed. So we have here something that is exposed is something that is uncovered. And we have something also related, which means dangerous. Now just put in mind that there are a lot of things that might be exposed and might be dangerous at the same time. Now moving back, we have finished four words. Now moving on to see what we have left. We have the word logo. Now, when we see the word logo here, which is actually a very simple word here, you can see that a lot of products, they do have logos. Now you can see these are different logos here. Now we do know that a logo is a noun. This is a logo. It is usually used for things. We have here, it is very close to a symbol. We can say that this is a kind of symbol and we can relate it to brands because usually brands they are the things that have logos now going back to our last word we have finished the part we have unconventional exposed and logo we have passed by outlandish spontaneously leaving us to our first word which is the consumer now this person is a consumer and also consumers can be online 
So we have your consumer here. We can say, of course, that it is a noun. This is a consumer. Now, of course, the, it is used for a person. Now we can say that the synonym of consumer is customer. And we have your related words is buying. So both the customer and the consumer, they buy things online or they can be also on, in, shops, in shops or supermarkets, shopping malls. So it depends on where you are. So we have completed our six words that we have here. Going back to our basic exercise that we have in the book, page number 73, we have here the first word, consumer. Now you can relate to the words that we have here. We have consumer, we can relate to a person. So we have here a person who buys things or services, which makes consumer a. Now something that we said that is exposed, we can relate from the words that we have here with the word unprotected, which makes it a little bit dangerous. So we have here F for exposed. Now logo is simply related to one word, which is symbol. So we have here design symbol of a business or a product, which makes logo B. Outlandish, now we said that we have here several times are repeated, that outlandish means something that it is strange. So we have the meaning shockingly strange or unexpected. So we have here A. Spontaneously is doing something freely or without planning. So we have here F is with C and unconventional, we are left with D, and actually have the word different is our keyword. So different from what is typically expected. We have here unconventional is D. We have completed our exercise, but as usual, I tell you, always try to relate. Now, always relate and connect with examples. So I'm going to give my, my own examples here, and you can see how I used the words in other examples. Now here I'm going to talk about Ahmed. Ahmed is a professional logo designer. He comes up with unconventional designs for his clients. To know what attracts consumers, he spontaneously goes out anywhere and sees what ideas are exposed and starts to think of new ones. Once he needed to go to shopping at a supermarket, he saw an outlandish stand that was advertising a product. An idea struck Ahmed as he looked at the stand, so he quickly left to work on his new design. He was so excited he didn't realize he left without even buying what he needed. So you can see from the whole example here that I have a complete story. The complete story here, I use the six words that we have learned within our vocabulary building. Now, I want you to prepare for page number 74 and 75, which is our reading lesson. You are going to see the same words that we have here in the vocabulary building within your passage. And we do have here an assignment for you. Make a list of all the places you see ads in your everyday life. How many ads do you think you are exposed to in an average day? So we have here, these are the assignments. Just think about different ads. And also, how many do you think you are exposed to? And we are going to discuss this part, inshallah, in our next lesson, which is the reading lesson. So at the very end, we have our outline for the day. We recognized the words and recalled previous meanings. We also understood in the comprehension part some words from pictures and others from synonyms and antonyms and connected to other different words. And at the very end, we connected to definitions and we related the words to different examples and personal experiences like the example that I give you about Ahmed. So this is our lesson for the day. Be prepared for our next lesson, which is the reading and keep on thinking about advertisements.